Klaus, you are a legend. Look at his troop bar. Klaus is going for the Noah's Ark, one of every single troop in Clash of Clans. Welcome to one of the most anticipated matches in the Coco Invitational, two versus two. On one side of the board, the world-renowned player out of Navi, Klaus is going to have two attacks in this war, and it looks like for his first one, he's breaking out the mass Valkyries. Only Valkyries. I would anticipate that he also has another six Valkyries inside of that Flame Flinger, but his teammate today is going to be none other than Timper, the Rookie of the Year for 2023. One of the youngest players in Clash of Clans Esports, and most recently, second place in the World Championship. He's now just signed into Millisim MG, where he will be playing the future but on the other side of the board there you can see that chronos is on defense right now that is chronos from tribe gaming chronos and ninja who was also a major contender for rookie of the year out of north america he was playing out of strut last year for the world championship and we're gonna see what they can do on the other side but let's get in here and see what klaus is up to as the valkyries begin their descent onto the base He's able to wipe out the top of the base there with the lightning flame layer cuts out the funnel at the very bottom quarter and then it'll push him towards the town hall Try to drive the heroes in. Looking for hero equipment. We got a level 24 giant gauntlet. We do have the archer puppet. Klaus refuses to switch over to the frozen arrow. We see almost all the other pro players if using healer puppet or frozen arrow. And Klaus thinking with the trusty old archer puppet for some extra HP regeneration. And also the spawning of the archers. But pops that ward ability. King takes the lead. Goes to Phoenix and is able to take the town hall down. Looks like uh, Road Champion setting up maybe to go in down south there or could work backwards to the top corner. I guess he has his options there. But either way, no matter how he plays it, he wants to make sure that the Valkyries are providing some protection. Use them to tank, use them for damage output. Also, use them to rush defensive heroes like that. We got the Road Champion is sworn by Valkyries right there. That does stack up there pretty heavy for the scatter shot. But I think he's okay even if he loses the whole pack there. RC is still on standby. He's got... Nope, just kidding. RC is deployed right there. RC came from the south. I thought she'd come from the north. He's got two more freezes on standby. Still looking good. I didn't see what came out of the flame flicker. I assume more Valkyries. I only see Valkyries on the board. Looks like he'll swag two freezes. And yes, it is confirmed. 20... No, excuse me. 46 Valkyries. 20 would be way too little. 46 Valkyries here. A pure Valkyrie army gets it done for Klaus. Diving into the other side. It is Kronos. Going to be kicking us off with a... Ice Golem attack? <laughs> what is this? I mean, oh, wait. Oh, no, no, I, I just realized. Now I see the bulk of his army there. He's got 23 Headhunters. All right, Kronos. You've caught our attention. I've seen... Gaku, I think it was, who tried this attack and he ended up with a one star. So that's why Gaku ended up losing his war in this exact same tournament and got knocked out of the lower bracket. But Kronos going to be trying to show him up here. And if, if this does go through, this will be the very, very first mass headhunter attack at Town Hall 16 that we've ever witnessed. And a lot of people attempted at Town Hall 15. I think I only got like one or two ever to go through because this attack is one of the most difficult attacks in all of Clash of Clans. Because you have to deal with every single hero, and then you have to deliver the headhunters into the core of the base, and then they have to then rage and spread out there, and hopefully they survive longer to actually do something. It's a lot of dead army space there, and honestly, a lot of times, you get a lot more value out of it. It's like very similar to difficulty of Barch, you know? Like, because they're not really going to do that much, but you know what they can do? They can go to the Ice Golem, get the defensive king out of the way, then they go to the very top of the base, another Ice Golem, and get the defensive queen out of the way, and now they can follow the king and the warrior into the base and take advantage of the rage gem that is boosting their damage output over the right though he needs to get this oh there goes the queen this is the same problem that happened to gaku lost the queen charge and that is going to make it very difficult to get this town hall down he's got a long way to go he's ending on the town hall this is an enormous wrist there he lost to heal this very very rapidly as he crossed through uh-oh 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 this <laughs> no how do you save this how do you save the town hall right now does he have the road champion? No, she's already put him left there, so he doesn't have a backup right there. Which means he has to find a way to get them across the base there. Looks like Flamethinger drops out Super Minions down south. And this is a very, very big problem. But you know what? <laughs> he had to try. Oh, wait, the king circled around. Hold up, hold up. Give us, get, let this king cook for a minute here. Let this king cook. He's got the... Uh, War, or he's got the king ability there with the giant gauntlet. He'll circle around. He's got ice golems right here. Hopefully the ice golems don't cause the 
Down the hall to get missed. They're going to the ward right now. They're going to make their way over to the king. He rages up. He's going to be stuck into the grass glaze for a moment. The giant golly gets through them. Come on, take the town hall. Don't get stalled on, on the ground. Ice Golems, I can't even talk. I can't even talk. Come on, King. Goes under Phoenix. Keeps on working on it. Does he have it? Ice Golem frees him up. Nope, nope. No, he does not. No, he does not. Another victim of the mass headhunter attempt. And you gotta hand it to him for trying. But like I said, it's one of the most difficult attacks in the, in the game. And somebody someday will be able to pull that out there. But today is not that day. Timper now in with a Skelly Donut. Going after the Clan Castle, the Multi Inferno, and the Monolith. Pretty good value right there. And we'll get all of his targets there. I was a little bit unsure about the Monolith there for a second, but he does secure it. And now, with the Clan Castle out of the way here, he'll dive at a Yeti to go in and. What was that? Um, looking at the other side of the base here to see what was there. Maybe a cannon? Yeah, I guess he took out the cannon over the wall there. He just got the Yeti to lock, get the Queen locked onto it, so it pushed forward and it threw over the wall there and took out the cannon so we can deploy inside the range of the cannon with the Flame Flinger. That was kind of clever. Also, it is a little bit of insurance in case he ends up running into, let's say, a Tesla farm right there. But look at this. The Queen on defense here stands in the fire. Really smart Queen right there. But I love this. Over to the side of the base. Here comes Inferno Dragons. We got Ground Expos and the King over there, so... Got them Eagle Artillery Strikes coming down. There's a Warden walking for the right side. Okay, there's a lot of different moving parts of this attack here. We're going to be very, very careful. But also, we need to make sure this Town Hall goes down. Look at these Inferno Dragons that go right around. There's some Black Air Bombs claiming out the other one. He's got one more. He's got one more attempt at the Town Takedown. He test for it right now. Well, Town Hall's not activated. It is activated now. And he'll go ahead and send in the Inferno Dragon. Need to freeze or go invisible right there. Maybe a combination of both of them. But Inferno Dragon lighting up this town hall. He'll go invisible to make sure that it goes down. But down south here, he does secure the town hall. And the super minions will drop out and start to work into the very bottom. And to get that multi-archer tower down. Support of the queen over there. Queen working along the outside of the base. Uh, she's going to end up attacking the wall here shortly. King up top there. Run out targets quickly as well. Leaving up a lot of the core of the base here that he doesn't really have access to. But, on, I mean, on the bright side, look at this one. He's added to the core of the base there. Rare champion charge. Royal champion. Usually you see a queen charge, but he's actually got a royal champion charge charging through the core of the base there with the healers. Warden was supporting, and he just did the warden walk all the way in that right side until he was able to set up for the the royal champion to go over the top of the warden, pull the warden through the base there, and then pick up the healers that the warden was using for the warden walk at the start. Turn the warden walk into a row champion charge, and he does get the triple, and that's two on the board there for their team. So you'll notice every single player has two attacks instead of the normal esports format where they have one attack per player. And that is because we only have two attacks for each of the pro players and so they only need to bring one account and the other accounts are there for placeholders. The Town Hall 7 and the Town Hall 11 will not participate. But let's dive into Ninja as he goes in and tries to salvage this war after the opening one star. Not going to be an easy task, but Ninja is a very good player and regardless of the overall score, we are going to see some wild attacks here. So even if this war ends up being one-sided, which right now it is looking a little bit one-sided on the scoreboard. Let's let these guys cook and see what happens. But I think he intended for the king to go over to the left there and go over to the defensive queen. Right now you can see this king is attacking the walls there. Like he made these buildings invisible to try to direct him over to the left there. But he always looks at the three closest targets. And in this case, the three closest targets were the three that were over the walls right here. And so the king attacked the wall. As he is programmed to do, that is purely how he's supposed to function. And so a little bit of a mistake there from Ninja probably didn't really account for that. You know, that's hard to account a lot of times for. And that's why a lot of times you see buildings that are more spread out on the outside of the base in base building. And you see bases that are more... Oh, what? What? What, is, what the heck was that? Ha! Huh. Wow! Ninja! Delivers with the Super Wizards out of the battle drill to the core of the base and is taking out everything in there. All right, you know what? All right, you know, that's fine. That's fine. You didn't get the fight of the king, but maybe he just made up for it with that monstrosity. And now we started in from the left side of the base there. 
Looks like he's got the level 23 frozen arrow on his queen. King not really got a lot of value to that little 27 giant gauntlet. But he will have the warden still on standby to go with the dragon riders and the balloons. And he just needs to get this queen to go in here and secure the town hall takedown. But I don't think she has a full healer set either. It's a lot of ground expos. Oh no. That's a lot of damage right there. He pops the warden. He deployed the warden. Is the warden on ground or air right there? Hey, warden. He's got a little cloud underneath him. I assume that means he's on air, right? Well, that's a problem. He's gone. Air defense shoots him down. Queen trying to hang on there, but he's able to secure the down takedown. And the expos on ground are going to be able to easily, obviously, handle that queen. A lot of damage right there. All right, we're to the right side. All right, this is this is falling apart here, guys. This is falling apart. Dragon Rider is able to clean up a big chunk of the base there, but obviously not enough for the triple. Klaus. <laughs> Klaus, you are a legend. Look at his troop bar. Klaus is going for the Noah's Ark. One of every single troop in Clash of Clans. Come on, buddy. We believe. We believe. Make it happen. Imagine if they get a perfect war here on top of everything they've already done. That would be insane, but let's keep it rolling here. Klaus, come on, buddy. He's going to start it with the blimp and a balloon over the right side. A giant over there as well. Skeleton spell to take the bottom. Blimp sails over the top there. Drops out a Yeti bomb. And finds the tornado trap right there. But the tornado trap is triggered away from the Yetis a little bit there. So hopefully these Yeti bites can jump and get the model down. That'll be his key target. They jump to it. They take it and they get the multi, the multi arch tower, I mean. And mortar as well. They're not done yet. They also get out an extra bonus of the all the base everything over there he cloned it didn't he yeah he cloned it. a clone yeti bomb in a noah's ark klaus that's what we love you buddy all right let's see what he can do let's see what he can do klaus is delivering today and he's good to now push his hero south on the base looks like warden queen deployed let's see if he's got that archer puppet yeah still not using frozen arrow still sticking with the archer puppet level 24 giant gauntlet rage jam to boost it up to the heroes here and Need some tanking out in front there. Pekka on the corner. Golem, Ice Golem, Valkyries, Headhunters, Apprentice Wardens, Electro Titans. And now the Golem King joins the fight. And he'll push this wall of a little bit of every tanking troop in all of Clash of Clans into the core of the base. A nice front here for his army. And a Yeti over the left side of the base there with a Buller. Pekka working out there. Buller's doing some good work there. There's the E-Dragon. A Dragon over the left side of the base where there's no air defenses. They can do some good work right there. There's the Ward Ability. King is locked on to by the single Furno. Is he okay? He can pop his uh, King Ability. As soon as he comes out of the Ward Ability, he can survive and should be able to secure that on Talon Takedown. There we go. All right. Powers through that single Furno. Perfect execution right now. Baby Dragon assisted up top. Witch over the corner. That's what we're looking for. We always like to see the Witch in the action. And each dragon ends up going all the way into the Town Hall area. But over the side, we see Rune Rider and Royal Champion deploying that area. We got a Hog Rider left on standby. We're taking the top Arch Tower. That's a perfect time for that. And he's, uh, he's right on top of it. There's the freeze. Lock out the Skeleton Shot. Lock out this Ricochet Cannon. And protect the Royal Champion of the finish line. It's a triple through and through. Not only a triple, but he's got a couple of swag spells as well. And that means that Klaus was able to put out 40 Valkyries. Excuse me. 46 Valkyries. And a Noah's Ark. And swag a handful of spells in both of them. And look how many troops he has still alive here. That is overwhelmed as Klaus delivers another one you have to imagine what it's like to do a noah's ark when you have one of every troop in the game then you are scrolling all over the place there like way more than normal like all these armies that these pro players take end up having a lot of ways that they have to scroll around but ooh, well, okay 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 oh no <laughs> he, he did not mean to make that storage invisible right there he used some lightning and he tried to do a bowler bounce to get the scatter shot off of the storage right there, but he accidentally made the storage invisible. All right, Cronus. Well, that's going to be a little bit of a hiccup there. Maybe he can recover it. He does have a barch. And we'll see what he can do here as he makes his way forward. He's got a log launcher as well, so he could try to cross the whole base. Imagine if he ends up with another one star. Yikes. Let's not talk about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, you can see that some of the scores are not going to log above my head here because. Normally, that uh, scoreboard is programmed for one attack per player, but it is not going to work for two attacks. And then having two attacks be not used from the other two accounts. Like, it's just going to remain sh uh, blank there for a minute. Well, let's see what Kronos can do. Here we go. Over to the left side of the base there. There goes more Bark. There goes the World Champion. 
He's got a shot hammering down on top of them. Got a lot of barbarians and archers. It's one of the biggest threats here, that and multi infernos. But uh, King leads the charge of the core of the base there. He's got the ward ability. He hasn't used the ward ability yet. The warden, he's, he's scared right now. He pulls off his John Cena skin there and he disappears on us. Even if he has the fancy new skin there that he probably used Code Eric for, then he can't even show it off to us. But at least he's got his uh, cool queen skin. I'd like to see it. Over to the defensive queen. Queen's still making her way forward here with the push towards the town hall. Already burned his warden ability, so warden's gonna go down right there. Visible warden goes down. And Queen delivers to the Town Hall, and I mean, he's got it all under control for the most part here, except for the scatter shot. Maybe the Rose Champion can wrap around and get it done, though. Maybe she can get there, but the Queen is going from the scatter shot right now. She's going to go down to it. Wall breaking through. Wall breaking not really doing much there, but the Rose Champion is still moving strong with the ability intact. He's got a lot of archers and barbarians following up right now. And, yeah, you know, you got to think about it, guys. If you were trying to do... What do you... Okay, let's, let's talk about this for a second. What do you think is more difficult? Mass Headhunters or Barch? Because at least Barch doesn't require you to clear all the heroes before you start to actually get some utility out of them. Where in this attack here, he has... The Barbarians and Archers can collapse in the edge of the base to keep the heroes moving where he wants them to go. And he can kind of do it on demand and not be forced into deploy to, into the heroes first to make sure he gets them down to provide the rest of his army some usefulness. Because Barbarians and Archers actually have a lot of damage output and he does get it done. Barch with how many uh, lightning was that? It was six lightning and two quakes and then 81 Barbarians, 82 Archers. And he still gets it done even with the bowler bounce mistake. And it's unfortunate he got a one star. But that's the way it goes. There's still three stars behind. We got one more exchange to go. Going for 12 stars. Going for the perfect war. The last attack between Klaus and Temper for the first round of the Coco Invitational. And it looks like he's going for a classic. I haven't seen this attack in ages. This is what was coined a long, long, long time ago as Yellowtron. If I think I know what he's doing here. He will clone up yet. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I thought he was going to go for the E-Drag kill squad to wipe out the core of the base, but he left out the air defense on both sides there. It does get down the multi inferno, but misses the expo, which is fine. I was going to say that could be a problem if he wants to push his heroes and the expo would be locked onto him, but at least he got the expo on the right side, and that would greatly encourage him to push his heroes at the right side. And the bottom quarter is looking very, very promising to get into the core and drive across the core. But if he can get this air defense over the side, then he could actually use the E-Drags to push in the core if he chose to. But it looks like he's going to drive the heroes in from the bottom and the right there. King's gonna make his approach into the core of the base. Queen will make her way in from the right side. Is this Queen using a Lassie? Or is that a Frosty? Just kidding. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, do, do people actually use Lassie above Town Hall 14? I was about to say, no, I don't think they do, but that would have been interesting if he did. But Frosty gives the Queen a little bit of support there, freezing up things on top of her frozen arrow, which, I mean, Frostbite's throw even further for, but the Queen goes down. She goes able to get all the way up to the bottom, and I don't think he expected her to get much further than that. But up at the top of the base there, there goes the Road Champion. Like, it feels like the attack feels very, very weak right now. It feels like he's not going to make it even close. What the heck is... is Do you see that giant trail that came off of the King when he popped his giant gauntlet? Is that must have been from that uh, that skin, right? That was really weird. That like threw me off like crazy. He's got a lot of like extra effects around him. They're like amplified there by the giant gauntlet. It's like a really cool effect. But the Rogue Champion redeploys there after the recall. He drags wiping out the core of the base. He's looking pretty good here, I think. It's hard to say right now. It's really hard to read this attack right now to see if it's actually working or not. But the Rogue Champion splits off to the side. She does get recovered from her ability that she used after she redeployed. And the ward is still working. He throws in rocket boots to try to get him through. Ward and clutches the scatter shot takedown. More boots to the left side. We'll go right into cleanup here and assist the ward champion. RC gets it done. Ward stays alive. And man, that was close. But Timber will get them the perfect ward in a creative format tournament. That was that was all over the place there. But on top of that, he's got a swag freeze. My man, Timber. That's that's my guys. That's why Timper was Rookie of the Year 2023. But now, 
His biggest contender for that Rookie of the Year title was Ninja, who will close out the war here with one more attack. 50 balloons, 12 lightning, and 24 minions. That's his whole army here. Let's see if he can do with it as he wipes out the right side of the base there, wiping out the left side of the base there, taking out both of the scatter shots and claiming out some infernos and some other high value targets next to it. On top of that, he took out two poison towers. And with the poison towers out of the way, He's going to face a lot less resistance for these balloons, which can be taken down as was when they get hit by those poison towers. But the king up the top of the base, they're going to make his way towards that defensive king, popping his giant gauntlet relatively early. 27 on that. Oh, 23 frozen queen making her way in. Frozen arrow queen, I mean. And everybody else has max equipment there. Ward will run the life gem. If, I mean, if you're running that many balloons there, you might as well try to protect them where you can. But he'll just go across the entire left side of the base and swarm the air defenses. No Lava Hounds, and that means he has to bring lots of minions to make up for the clear that you don't get from spawning Lava Pups. But the Queen, where did the Queen go? I'm looking at the World Champion down south here. I, don't, I lost track of his Queen. I guess she died up at the Town Hall, right? All right, well, either way, World Champion keeps on moving. Find out the Ice Golems on defense. Blue's doing a pretty good job there, but the Water Building was able to protect some Headhunters. He brought in a couple of Headhunters because we still obviously have to have an answer for the defensive heroes to make sure we can power through them, but... Looking pretty good here overall. Roar Champion disappears right at the perfect time to escape the wrath of that single Inferno. Steps away with some assistance, and it looks like he will get it done. So that's an overwhelming triple right there. I mean, basically his spell is Lalo, with all of the spells being invested into Lightning and just attack the base from every single side at the same time, taking down Klaus. So you got ahead of these guys. They put up a, a pretty good fight there, but a couple of mistakes couple of errors and that makes a big big difference here but it is a three star lead into temper and klaus's favor but take a look at the bracket here before we head out for the day and if you guys by the way if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe temper and klaus match three are going to be paired next with ghost and max so looking forward there we're gonna move on to the upper bracket looks like the losers unfortunately will drop down and they will face off with Eltano and Al Mualan in the lower bracket.